So to start, let's go to number three. Okay. So this is kind of a a, a throwback to some kind of old stuff. We've we've done this before, and it's it's really just a little bit of a reminder uh, that there's these special formulas for uh, summation notations of of specific kinds of things. So um, this is the sum from i equals one to n, oh no, not to n, to 20, of i to the third. Okay, so, you know, how, how do we solve this? Well, if you look on the first page of this section, there's a special formula. Flipping, flipping back. Okay, um, so the formula for this sum, you'll see it there, from i equals 1 to n, and in our case n is 20, it's just n squared, so that's 20 squared times 20 plus 1 squared over 4. Um, that's it. We just need to now plug away. Here we got 400 times 21 squared. 21 squared. It's 441. Over 4. Let's just cancel that out and make that 100. So this is 4. So 44,100 is the sum for number three. So the, the idea here is we're just kind of relearning that there are these special formulas for special kinds of sums. Okay. So now let's take it a little a step further here and do something like uh, number number nine. The only difference here is that we don't have an n that's a number, like a 20. It's a variable. i equals 1 to n. This will be for any n of i to the third over n to the fourth. Um, and you can, you can imagine, given the last video, that we're going to need to know these things, because we're going to find lots of sums of stuff. So. Um, so the formula from from back in, in this example is just n squared times n plus 1 squared, the quantity squared, over 4. Um, so the thing is, we don't, we don't have a, a specific n value. Uh, we have just um, you know, n, just in general. Whatever n is, that's what we're going to put in here. If this were 40, we would have done 40. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave n as a variable, kind of create a, another formula, a formula for the sum using the special formulas. Uh, okay, so one thing that we should recognize is that this is a constant. Um, so each of these terms that we're adding up is going to have this constant n to the fourth uh, divided into it or it's going to have 1 over n to the 4th multiplied by it. So we could factor out that 1 over n to the 4th out of that entire sum, and that leaves this times the sum of all that. So this sum, we just, we're going to wind up with a function where you can plug in n and find the, the, uh, the sum. So 1 over n to the 4th times, well this has a special sum, uh, or a special formula, it's just n squared times n plus 1, quantity squared, over 4. S sub n is equal to, we just multiply all this together. Um, so this is going to be n squared times n squared plus 2n plus 1 over 4n to the 4th. S sub n is equal to n to the 4th plus 2n to the 3rd plus n squared over 4n to the 4th. There it is. Voila. Um, it's really useful to multiply things out.
have them in this form where it looks like a polynomial of a polynomial, especially when we let n go to infinity. Now let's do number 18. Uh, let's start with let's start with black. Okay, so I'll try to do the best job I can here. Is a function f of x is equal to 2 minus x squared. And it's this parabola that opens down. And we're going to go between the uh, values of negative 1 and 1 and split it into 4. Okay, So what we really want is this area between these two guys. Right in there. But just ease into it, baby steps. We're going to split it into, you know, split it in half, then we'll split that in half. So we have four rectangles. So here's one, and here's one, and there's one. All right, just makes it so easy to use the right side of the rectangle. It makes the formula work out really nicely and everything, so we're going to use the right side. We could easily use the left side of the rectangle, left, left, uh, to, to come up to the function. But anyway, I don't know why I went off on that. So, um... We're just going to find the area of all these rectangles and add it together. So how wide is each of these rectangles? Well, uh, we'll use the, the, I guess, the formula b minus a. So 1 minus negative 1 over n. n is the number of rectangles. There's four rectangles. So each rectangle is 1 half in width. Okay. That would be the width. And so we have the width of this rectangle, 1 half, times how tall is this rectangle? Uh, well, it's just as tall as the function is, and this is negative one half. So we'll put negative one half in there. So we get two minus negative one half squared. And okay, so that'll be the height of the function. Now on to the next rectangle, one half times. Now the function again, two minus but not one half squared, zero squared plus one half the width again of this rectangle times the height of this rectangle, which is. 2 minus positive 1 half squared. Okay, because this is positive 1 half here. That's how high this rectangle is. It goes right up to the function. Plus 1 half, that's the width of this fourth rectangle, times its height, which is uh, 2 minus 1 squared. Okay. <coughs> so just for convenience sake, these all have a 1 half, and then let's factor out that 1 half. That'll make it easier. And 2 minus negative 1 half squared. Negative 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 2 minus 1 fourth is 2 and 3 fourths. So 7 fourths. Uh, I shouldn't have drawn that. Plus 2 minus 0 is 2. Remember, I'm not writing these 1 halves down because I factored out the 1 half there plus 1 half has been factored out. 2 minus, again, 2 minus a fourth is 7 fourths, plus 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so work that all out and get 13 fourths. So the area is 13 fourths, which is about, well, it's exactly 3 and 1 quarter. Um, so there you go. There's a specific number of rectangles there, and we found the area using those really wide, relatively wide when you think about how thin we want those rectangles to really be. So now, no, let's keep that. We'll go straight on to something like 36. So this is the function Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. And so um, we're going to use an infinite number of rectangles to find the area under this curve. This curve is a straight line. Um, so here we go. Oh, and we're gonna we have to have an interval. It's impossible to do without an interval. Uh, so an interval from 2 to 5. Okay. So there's this, this line, and we want to find the area under this line between 2 and 5. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of this. So i equals 1 to n of, OK, 
Okay, so b minus a over n. b minus a. b is 5, a is 2, so b minus 5 is 3. Or b minus a. 5 minus 2 is 3 over n. That's the width of our rectangles times f of um, yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to write this little formula over here. The limit as n goes to infinity of this i equals 1 to n of b minus a over n times the function of, or the, the value of the function at uh, a plus b minus a over n times i. Okay. And by the way, just as a, I don't know if this is a, a, a promotion or, or showing you how much of a dork I am, but every time I write this down, I, I haven't memorized it per se, I understand what it means and I derive it every single time. I think, uh, you know, what is this, the width of the rectangle, of course, th that's how we would find the width of the rectangle. Um, it doesn't look enough like an A. Uh, and this would be the height of the rectangle. We're going to start, I have visualized starting at A and adding on these little rectangles. I'm going to have this width and I'm going to add on I of them. So if that's, that's my little plug for actually understanding it, not just memorizing it, not just being able to plug in the values. Anyway, F of this value, this is F, and we're going to plug this value into it. So we start by 3 times, all right? So what's A? A is 2 plus B minus A over N. That's what we just found. B minus A over N is 3 over N. Uh, times i. Okay, so 3 times that stuff minus 4. And there we go. Alright, so let's uh, keep going. Just had to pause there for a second. Um, I want to end. Let's clean all this stuff up. It's gross looking. Um, so first... We got 3 times 2, that's 6. Uh, 3 times 3 over n uh, times i. So that'd be 9 over n times i. Uh, and then we will subtract 4 from that. So save ourselves some time. This will be 2. So the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, the sum of i equals 1 to n of 3 over n times 2 plus 9 over n times i. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum. Okay, I'm getting tired of writing this. Let's be 3 over n times 2 would be 6 over n plus 3 over n times uh, n, uh, 9 over n would be 27 over n squared times i. Phew, okay. So, remember from our previous example that these sums, since it's a sum of a sum, we can split them up. And I'm just going to uh, mm, yeah, do this all at once. So, there's a special sum formula for a constant. That's what this is. Remember, n is a fixed number of rectangles. Uh, so, 6 over n would be a constant, which is 6 divided by a billion trillion, which is the number of rectangles we're using, or or 3, whatever. Um, so the limit as n goes to infinity of... So the formula for that, for that special sum, would just be n times that constant, because it would be n of these. We're going to add this up this many times. So it would wind up being 6n over n plus... Okay. So this would be the constant as well. All right. And so when we take a sum, and this is the only thing that's varying, it's the only thing that's changing... Uh, we could just take that constant times the special formula for this sum. The special formula for this sum is n times n plus 1 over 2. Um, so the limits, we're almost there. Of Well, 6n over n, we could really, since n isn't 0, they just would cancel each other out. So this would just be 6 plus... Let's do this all at once. This would be 27n squared plus 27n over 2n squared. And 
Now we are letting n go to infinity. Nothing happens to this when n goes to infinity, so it's just 6 plus. What happens when this n goes to infinity? Degree is the same, so we get 27 over 2. Okay, so this is 12 over 2, so that's 39 over 2. 39 over 2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I've not led you astray. And I haven't. We win. Okay, so, um, yeah. All right, so um, let's just go back to that original example. We'll actually use the limit process to find the exact area of this thing. So we're going to divide it not into 4 or 8 or, or 16, but an infinite number of rectangles. So thin are these rectangles. You couldn't even imagine. Thinner than an atom, thinner than a wavelength of light. So you couldn't even see uh, their width. So anyway, remember that what we're going to use, uh, we'll say the, the limit as n goes to infinity. Why? What does that mean? n is the number of rectangles, and we're going to let the number of rectangles be infinite. Okay. Or go to infinity. Okay. i is a particular rectangle like this would be the ith rectangle. Uh, we're going to start at the first rectangle and go to the nth rectangle and let n be uh, going on to infinity. Um, and the width of each rectangle, since this is um, this will be a and this will be b, right? we'll take b minus a, that'll be the distance between the two. We'll divide it by the number of rectangles, that'll give us the width of the rectangle. So this is the first part of, of an area of a rectangle. The width times the height. The height is just going to be the height of the function. And the height of the function changes, so we need to you know, kind of put some variable variability in here. Um, so the way we decided to do that was to start at A, and we'll add on the widths, that, or as many widths as we need for whatever rectangle we're on. Right? We'd add on I rectangle widths to get to this point. Okay. Um, so this is a rectangle width. and we're going to add i of them. Right, so we'll multiply this by i, and that'll take us out to the ith value of x that we're going to use. So we're going to do that for this function. So the limit as n goes to infinity uh, from i equals 1 to n of... Okay, so we're going to start plugging stuff into this now. b is 1, so 1 minus a is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 over n, uh, times the function at this value, and we're going to plug in all the values that we have. We have a, we have b, we have a again. Uh, we just don't have n, and we don't have i, so those are going to stay kind of variable in a manner of speaking. Uh, so times the function with this plugged into it. So a is 1. No, a is 0, excuse me. a is 0, so that we don't have to worry about that. So it's just b minus a over n. We just found that was 1 over n. Okay, that's going to get, uh, oh, excuse me, not that, not quite yet, 1 over n times i. Okay, so that's this whole thing. And that is what goes in for x into the function, and the function squares something and adds 1. Okay, so there we go. That's that's our function at this value with everything plugged into it. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum i equals one to n of let's start simplifying this a little bit. So we'll, we'll multiply this by itself. We'll square it times one over n squared times i squared plus one. Let's multiply all this together. Just go like this, so the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum. This is a pain to write a bunch of times. Uh, so we're going to distribute this 1 over n. We'll get 1 over n to the third. That's silly. Let's get rid of that. Uh, so 1 over n to the third times i squared. Uh, plus 1 over n. <coughs> oh.
All right. So to find these sums, um, we're going to need to to think about uh, these. How to put this? Um, we're going to need some special formulas, okay? And and also as part of this, we're going to need to remember some stuff about. We should put some parentheses around that about uh, summation notation. Uh, the the sum of a sum, right? If we're trying to take this sum and there's a sum in it, we can break them apart. So this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of this sum plus the sum of 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 this stuff. Okay, so i equals one to n of one over n to the third times i squared plus the sum from i equals one to n uh, times of one over n. Okay, so to to figure these out, um, let's work on understanding them. Just a reminder of understanding them. It's not anything new, uh, and then. Uh, use these special formulas. Okay, so to remind you of what this summation notation means, we're going to take the first term, which means we're going to we're going to plug in one for i. So one's going to go in for i, um, and we're going to take that value, and then we're going to go to two. We're going to put two in for i, and then we're going to you know, find that value, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, the thing is. Um, the i is the only thing that changes. If you if you remember, n is the number of rectangles. So once we've uh, set our minds on the number of rectangles, n is a constant. So this is a constant. All right. So there's this uh, rule that says if you've got a constant times uh, the the thing that actually changes in the sum, you can rewrite it like this: the limit as n goes to infinity. Of, now this is a constant, so this constant is going to be in every term of this sum, and so it can be factored out of all of those terms. Now this is getting small, sorry. Okay, so the only thing that actually changes is 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 this part, the i squared, and then every term of that would be multiplied by this. So, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, now this there's only a a, a constant in here, so. You know, what do we make of that? That's kind of a, a weird thing. Um, so if you if you look in your book, it's on in our book, it's page eight hundred and twenty. That first rule is for a constant. The the sum of just a constant is just going to be uh, you know, it's gonna be that constant over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It's gonna be that n times. So that's going to be uh, n of these. So n times 1 over n. OK. That's what this comes out to be. That's the actual formula for that sum. You'll forgive me for just scrolling down and continuing our work down here. Um, so we continue on to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the third times this sum. Well, there's a special formula for this sum. Uh, the sum for the the first um, n squares is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 plus n over n, so that's just 1 n over n would just be 1, as long as n isn't 0, which it's not. It's infinity, or it will be. Um, so then we're, let, let's multiply this out, because we want to you know, talk about what's the, what, what happens as n goes to infinity. And for us, that's kind of a function of what is the degree of this versus the degree of the denominator, OK? So we're going to multiply that out. And we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over, well, you know, let's, uh, we know we're going to multiply these together. So we know the denominator is just going to be 6n cubed. Okay, so up here, um, 
let's just say, yeah, this is going to be n squared plus n when we distribute that n. So we know that. Okay, so we're going to multiply these two things together. 2n times n squared is 2n to the third. That's the n to the third term. So let's get the n squared terms. There's a 2n squared and a 1n squared. That's 3n squared. Okay, and we'll get the n terms. That'll just be 1n plus n, and that'll be it. That's everything that we have, uh, plus 1. And we want the, the limit of this this whole thing as n goes to infinity. So now we are we're just like almost there. So the, what happens to this guy right here? As n goes to infinity, what happens? Nothing. It just stays 1. It is 1. Uh, so now we're going to add 1 on here. What happens to this thing as we go to infinity, as n goes to infinity? Um, well, remember the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator here. So it's just going to be the ratio of the two leading coefficients. That'd be 2 over 6 or 1 third. So 1 plus 1 third, that would be 4 thirds. Okay, so let's remember that 4 thirds. That's 1.3 repeating. Um, let's go up to our approximations with two and four rectangles. That was at the in the last video. With two rectangles, we found it was about 1.65. With four rectangles, 1.469. And if we keep doing that and let n go to infinity, the number of rectangles go to infinity, we wind up with 1.3 repeating. Okay, that's a pretty cool deal. Pretty amazing that we can find the area under the curve just using this idea uh, the idea of splitting it into a bunch of rectangles and then letting the number of rectangles go to infinity okay